Hi and welcome back to a new video. It's been a few days after we released a video regarding the Aros C690 board and in this particular video we also showed a performance per watt comparison of the 12900K versus a 5950X CPU. And in this testing we were using the 12900K with DDR5 6000 memory modules. And a lot of people, at least in a German video, were criticizing this type of testing because we were using unfair memory, memory configurations, comparing DDR5 6000 versus 3600 C18, which is apparently slow on the AMD Ryzen CPU. And that's why I agreed that this might not be as fair or it could shift the, I don't know, benefit more towards the Intel CPU. And that's why I agreed on buying a lot of stuff. I purchased a lot of CPUs and also two mainboards to perform some comparisons regarding performance per watt and also per price. This video is sponsored and powered by Western Digital and the SN570 M.2 and VME SSD. Especially while editing our 4K videos, the loading time using the SN570 is about five to seven times quicker in Adobe Premiere than compared to a conventional HDD. The Western Digital dashboard is also a very nice piece of software you should absolutely try with your SN570 or other Western Digital drives. For example, if you click on performance, you can keep track of what your SSD is doing in the background, might be gaming or some creative workload. And if you switch to status, you can, for example, check a live remaining, which in my case obviously is 100%. Also quite interesting, you can keep track of the temperature of your drive how much capacity is left. And what I find personally very useful is the interface speed, which shows the capability of the drive and also the connection. In this case, it's correctly connected with Gen 3 PCIe and four lanes, which is also required to achieve the maximum read speed of the drive of 3,500 megabyte per second. The SN570 is available with 250 and 500 gigabyte size and one terabyte size. Find out more information about this drive in the link below. Some words regarding our Intel and also AMD test platforms. The first board which I purchased is the Asus Prime C690 PD4 motherboard. It's one of the cheaper C690 boards, which I think makes much more sense to pair with a 12600K. Currently I have a 12700K in the socket because I also performed some testing with this CPU, but we will compare the 12600K in today's video. I paid about 230 euro for this board. So that should be a good comparison for our AMD setup, which is a B550 eGaming. I think that is a very solid board for pretty much every C CPU for AM4 socket. And also changed the memory modules. Now I purchased some 3600 C141414, 34 Trident Z Elite kit. That should be B die, 32 gigabyte in total, 3600 megahertz, obviously. Some AMD CPUs can run this with like 3800, but I think this should be a fair kit to use on both AMD and also Intel platform. Regarding the memory modules, one could argue that we are testing pro AMD, which is somehow true because in theory, we could use a better kit for the Intel CPU if we would use a DDR5 board, but then DDR5 boards are usually more expensive and also it costs much more and investing 300 euro more in combination with a 12600K doesn't really make much sense. You would probably spend the money on the 12700K or even 12900K, but let's get to the data. We are starting the comparison with Far Cry 6 in 1080p high setting. First look, the 12600K is about 15 to 20% faster than the 5600X. But if we take a look on the left side, you can see the power consumption of the 5600X is about 10 watt lower than the 12600K. If we translate this in FPS per watt, we can see that the 12600K is now much closer to the 5600X. We are getting 1.72 FPS per watt for the 12600K and 1.7 FPS per watt for the 5600X. And if we go even further and add the price of the CPU, which on the left you can see is about the same for both CPUs, about 299 US dollar price picked on PC part picker. The 5600X results in 0.572 FPS per watt and dollar and the 12600K results in about 0.569 FPS per watt and dollar. I think it is very interesting if you just look at the raw performance, the 12600K is quite impressive because it's about 15 to 20% faster. But then if you take into account the power consumption, which is a bit lower on the 5600X, and then also at the price, 
In the end, for at least the first data, they are very close together. But let's take a look at further benchmarks. We are now looking at Far Cry 6 in 4K Ultra. This is the only 4K comparison data we will have in today's video. I have much more data, but I took it out because 4K pretty much everything is just GPU limited and it will not give us a lot of benefit or good data for the comparison of just the CPUs. Performance wise in 4K Far Cry 6, both CPUs act about the same, while the 5600X draws about 8 watt less power if we translate that in FPS per watt. It's about 20% difference between the 5600X and the 12600K. And if we now also add the price, the 5600X seems to be the much better choice. It's about 0.48 FPS per watt and dollar, while the 12600K is about 0.41 FPS per watt and dollar. We have very similar data for Battlefield 2042 compared to Far Cry 6. Both CPUs act about the same performance wise. 5600X is slightly stronger while it consumes about 10 watt less. And that is translating in about 25% better FPS per watt ratio, adding the price it stays about the same because both CPUs cost about the same. In the Aros C690 review where we compared the 12900K to the 5950X, we were completely missing any kind of render benchmarks. We only did gaming load. And obviously the 5950X is much more efficient in rendering applications than in gaming compared to the 12900K. That's why we also added render benchmarks here, starting with R20 Multi and the 12600K is very strong in this benchmark with 6600 points compared to the 5600X which has 4200 points. But the 5600X also consumes about 60 watt less. Translating in performance, translating in points per watt, it's about 55 points per watt for the 5600X and 48 points per watt for the 12600K. Adding in the price, it's about 19 points per watt and dollar for 5600X and about 16 points per watt and dollar for the 12600K. In HWBOT X265 benchmark, it's very similar to R20. The 12600K is much stronger than the 5600X, but it also consumes a lot more power. And translated in FPS per watt, we can see it's about 0.2 FPS per watt for 5600X and 0.14 for the 12600K. That is a huge difference and it shows the 5600X is much more efficient. Price performance wise, it won't change much because both CPUs cost about the same. Looking at this data, I think we get very good results, at least for real life scenarios. Because reviewers, and that's including myself, tend to always test for the peak performance, for the peak power consumption. And then you get, for example, that the 12600K is a very, very strong CPU and it has a very high power consumption. But in reality, the power consumption is usually much lower for gaming scenarios. And then it will depend, are you looking for gaming only or are, are you also looking for render applications? Are you looking for just the max raw performance or do you also care about like price performance and price per watt? All these data can be acquired with having three of these different sheets. And I think this is a very good metric to get an idea which CPU is superior. Let me know what you think about this type of testing. I now finally bought all the missing CPUs. So we have 5600X, 5800X, 5900X, 5950X, 12700K, 12900K obviously. I finished most of this comparison data already with most of these CPUs, but it will depend what kind of comparison you're looking at. Because in the previous video, some people were also arguing about that I'm comparing a 12900K with a 5950X, which I mean made sense for me because it's the high-end CPU for AMD and for Intel. But you could argue that because of the core count being so much different that maybe the 12900K should be compared to the 5900X. Let me know what you think about this and um, I guess this should be quite good data if you really want to take a choice about which CPU to get for like gaming scenarios or re render applications. Alright, thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.